Hong Hu was on her way to work as usual. We could say it was the beginning of her day. That today, in front of her doorstep, ironically lied an envelope that would not only end this day, but the foreseeing days to come. For her family had come into very classified information that the United States was going to insert itself into Vietnam and that not only was it potential but a war was soon to come and they in the letter instructed her to leave her child and her life in America and in this envelope behind the letter was a ticket a one-way ticket to South Africa where her family would await her arrival this left her burdened, exhausted, so much so that she skipped a day of work, something she has never done in her 16 years in America. She took slow steps without an intention to awake her son who laid fast asleep in a nearby kitchen, for she feared if he were to awake, she could not forgive herself for the very thoughts that roamed in her mind. Ten years later, Ace awakes, sweating, as though he just ran a mile, as though his head was throbbing from a nightmare, but he shakes it off and stretches. After awakening and getting dressed, he searches around the house. His mom's usual tradition of breakfast was nowhere to be found. He could not smell one piece or a pancake or an egg. Nothing was frying on the pan. In fact, he heard nothing. He looked all over to no avail, for she was gone, unknown to him. She had taken that flight after 10 years. Thinking his mother went to work early, Ace moves on and decides to head to his dear friend's house, Daryl Jenkins, who decides to bring him to their chill-out spot in the nearby park, where Daryl informs him that the high school had been closed, not just for the protesting students against the Vietnam War, but for the results of a fatal shooting of a student who did not fear the authorities that were summoned to put a halt to the protest, who dared to place a rose petal in front of a pistol aimed towards him, which was fired in a single shot that hit him right in the head, which killed him instantly. Not truly affected by this, Daryl and Ace decided to just smoke. After hours of puffing and passing, smoking enough weed to climb his way to a tree alongside his dear friend Daryl Jenkins, Ace decides to leave. Once home, Ace is informed by the landlord that he'll have a week before eviction. That's when it begins to hit Ace that maybe his mother truly is gone. Not waiting for her, Ace rushes to his father's house. Once there, he repeatedly knocks the door with a fierce sound, as though to match the beat of his cautious yet frightened heart. The door opens, his father greets him with a pound. His father leaves him with neither an answer nor takes an attempt on the whereabouts of his mother, only telling him that he must participate in the Panther's Claw, a subdivision of the Black Panthers in which he leads during his stay in, in his apartment. Not willing to confront his father on being on responsibility for the neighborhood when he would not even take an attempt to raise him, Ace heads up on the roof where he sits and stares at the sky, wondering where his mother could be. Upon gazing at the stars, 
Ace overhears gunfire. Worried about his father, he runs downstairs, only to find the dead body of a cop. And only to find out that this so-called Panther's Claw is actually a drug dealing spot run by his father. While smoking, torn between remaining and obtaining a high to evade the problems of the world that currently oppress his mind, the other side of him thinks of an idea. He begins to believe that yes, yes, he should be high, but not high on marijuana, but high over the sky, flying to Vietnam for it's the only place his mother could head to. After all, where else could she be? Ace now in the military in Nam fights what seems to be an endless war. So much so, he begins not to give up on the search for his mother, but realizes that there is no way she could be in his hellhole.